At school, I was not allowed, even at the philosophy hour, to discuss and talk. I was not even allowed to ask the, what paradox we have here in these two subjects, philosophy and Islamic education. And for me, I was all the time knowing that Morocco is not a country for me to have my freedom. Kassem El Kazali is 23 jaar. Hij groeide op in Marokko en in Libië. Op de middelbare school begon hij een anoniem seculier blog. Maar zijn tegenstanders spoorden zijn identiteit op... en hem werd geloofsafval en godslastering verweten. In Marokko staat kritiek op de islam bovendien gelijk aan kritiek op de koning... en is strafbaar. Nadat El Kazali een interview gaf over zijn denkbeelden op de Franse televisie... werd hij op school belaagd, de imam van zijn dorp klaagde hem aan in een moskee... en zijn familie nam afstand van hem. Anonieme doodsbedreigingen volgden. El Kazali kreeg in 2013 asiel in Zwitserland en wil daar gaan studeren. Hij vertegenwoordigde de internationale humanisten... bij de adviesraad voor de mensenrechten bij de Verenigde Naties. If I have my poems, solitude and alcohol, then I'm happy. I was at first very much inspired by Nietzsche. I've read uh, those uh, spooks that I Then uh, there was a moment when I read Spinoza and then I was like uh, quite fascinated by the idea of a cosmic God. My acceptance to my atheism, it was not between the night and day. It was step by step. The internet for me was the biggest escape in my life uh, from uh, the moment or the period when I was surrounded by lots of uh, thoughts and uh, critical ideas. I was driven uh, by the need to discover and by the need to express my opinions. There was a period in my life I thought I'm the only atheist. I tried hard to believe. I thought maybe I'm crazy, maybe there is uh, something uh, wrong with me. Thanks to the internet, I got to know there were other atheists like me. It also introduced me to, like we would say, intellectual schools of uh, philosophy and thinking. And in the same time, to network. I don't belong to any place at the moment. My homeland for the moment is Switzerland. As long as I'm free, as long as I'm free to think, that's my homeland and I would do whatever to keep it apprising and a blossoming like a flower. In the West, uh, there is a misunderstanding of the concept of freedom. Sometimes I feel much more in danger here than in Morocco. We are here talking in front of the Islamists, the ideology of the, the ones who are labeled to be uh, religious activists uh, for the Islamic ideology or for the Islam uh, as a religion. And uh, the, these people here, they are mostly uh, being supported. I feel sometimes like really I have to think more that I have to censor myself and censor my words before I talk about Islam. Even if my criticism is built and is based on real facts. Some people from Europe come to my page and they start to say, oh, let them have enjoyed their freedom. And they tell them, how dare you say that death threats are freedom? The Western people in general, they are too sensitive. They are letting their emotions work instead of their rationalism. They are all the time afraid to be labeled as racists, of being labeled as Islamophobes. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. They are persecuted in their countries. We have been colonizing them for so many years. They are so poor. 
I'm not asking you to take a stake and kick the ex extremists uh, or beat them up or kick them out of the country. I'm talking about you need to have this debate, to debate, to talk about these things. If you really, you care about your future and the future of the coming generations. I also uh, speak the language of a uh, vast majority of Muslims and they check uh, uh, the, their blogs and they go online and they search and go to their forums. Mostly they are hoping that uh, within 15 years Europe will be an Islamic state and Germany would be the German Islamic Republic. If you just accept ignorance and accept terrorism within your society, within communities which don't belong to you and you think you are safe, be sure you are not. If you don't defend your freedom against the ones who want to stole it, you would lose it one day. There is this hope inside many Muslims that Europe would be an Islamic empire as the prophets promised once. When I receive a letter from a young girl, like 17 years old, uh, from Libya, and she tells me about her da daily stories, and she says, thank you for uh, being there and talking for us, or the same happens uh, with young people from Morocco. That's the biggest support, actually, especially when it comes from the Arab and Islamic world. And I publish some letters sometimes. It makes me happy, to be honest, and makes me sad in the same time that there are other people which wish to be in my uh, position right now where uh, I'm benefiting from the freedom in Europe. <laughs>